so I did get to uh, get the opportunity to be trained as a decorator and a baker. Um, I have some of my cakes here to show you, just a couple. These are a few of the cakes that I've done. Um, over the years I have worked out of my house and I made wedding cakes and I made cakes for my kids. And this is a three layer wedding cake that I did not too long ago where we did a ombre ruffle. So it started out as white and then came all the way down into pink. Um, this is a chocolate cake I did for a bridal shower not too long ago. This, uh, this cake right here is the recipe, is the chocolate cake recipe. You had an option of either chocolate or lemon. So this, no, those are just little rubber ducks. Um, this is the Oregon Ducks cake I did for a friend who requested it. So, um, kind of fun. So the recipes that we're working with today, um, one is a lemon cake and one is a chocolate cake, and I believe you guys got to pick which one you wanted to make. So I'm just going to run through a few of the steps with you. So my, my opinion on cake decorating is that it all starts with a good recipe. I really feel strongly that you need to make a good flavored cake as your base. Because you can make it look pretty, but you really want it to taste good too, right? You need, you need both elements for a successful cake. So um, my opinion is I prefer buttermilk-based cake recipes. I have three primary cake recipes that I work with. I do the lemon and the chocolate that you guys got to choose from, and I also do a, a red velvet cake. And all of the cake recipes that I've worked with over the years, the best ones tend to have buttermilk. And I feel the reason is that it adds moisture to the cake, because cake can be dry, you know. Um, you don't want to bite into a dry piece of cake. So I feel like buttermilk adds a lot of moisture. And it also adds good flavor. Buttermilk has a tang to it, kind of like yogurt does, or maybe even sour cream, it's a little tangy. And so that tends to offset the sweetness in, um, in cake recipes. It gives you a good balance and a good depth of flavor. So both of the recipes that we're working with today have buttermilk in them, so you're gonna notice that. Cake prep. Um, I know last week, whenever you guys did your brownie lab, you worked with parchment, and we're gonna be doing the same thing again this week. I feel like parchment is a very important piece to cake decorating. So both of the cakes that we're gonna be doing today are two layers. We're gonna be making two nine inch round cakes. So what we're gonna be doing is you're gonna come up here and you're gonna grab a piece of parchment paper. You're gonna take your cake pan and you're gonna trace a circle. That way it's gonna fit your pan exactly. That one's a little sloppy, I should do it again. The pan's kind of slippery. But you're going to do it two times, one for each layer, just like this. You're going to trace, cut, and then when you get to your stations, you're going to grab ham or you can use butter, um, either one. But you're going to make sure you get a little bit of um, oil or ham or grease down in the bottom of your cake pan and up along the side, and you're going to place your parchment circle right down in the middle. And the reason for that is um, it allows for easy removal. So when you go to take your cake out of the pan, it's not going to stick. Because that is a really important piece there, too. You don't want to uh, get that far with your recipe and then have your cake just crumble as you're trying to get it out of the pan. So just a little extra precaution that I always do with all my cakes. So there's a few steps here for the people that selected lemon cake. Who here is doing a lemon cake? You guys are? You are? Maybe one of you guys know. So for those of you that are doing a lemon cake, I wanted to go over a few little tidbits with you. Um, one of the steps requires zesting a lemon. And I wanted to uh, explain that a little bit. In your stations, you'll have this tool right here. If you've never used it before, it's called a microplane. And basically, um, what you're doing when you zest the lemon is you're removing this outer skin right here. And the reason we want to do that is because all the flavor is in that skin. There's oil in the skin, and the oil carries that really intense lemon flavor. And um, so what you want to do is grate it with that. You want to hold your tool and run this around the lemon like that to remove, to remove this is the zest, to remove all of the zest. And you just want to take off the top layer. If you start to see white, you've gone a little bit too far. The white part is called the pith. And you want to stay away from that because that's bitter. So if you start to see white, just ease up on your pressure and go a little lighter and just scrape off the outer layer of your lemon. There's a ton of flavor right here. We're gonna. Go ahead and add this zest right into the batter, and it's going to really intensify the lemon flavor. There's a cheese grater here, too. If ever you're at home and you need to zest a citrus fruit and you don't have this tool, you can use the backside of the cheese grater, and it gets the job done. 
juicing your lemon. So after you've scraped off the outer edge, your lemon's kind of naked, what you're going to do is just take a knife, you're going to cut it in half, and you're going to squeeze all of the juice out of, out of it. Get all the juice you can out of it. Um, one tip is to kind of roll it like this before you cut it. This kind of releases some of the fibers, and sometimes you're able to get more juice out of it. So just give it a roll, cut it in half, and then just squeeze as much juice out of it as you can. Um, you can just squeeze it right over a bowl. You can hold a little strainer over there to collect the seeds. If you don't have a strainer, just go ahead and squeeze it right into the bowl and use a spoon to get your seeds out. But get as much lemon juice as you can because we're going to be using that as well. There's a little bit of lemon juice in the recipe, and then we're going to be um, making a little syrup afterwards to go over the top. Another step I wanted to go over with you guys is separating eggs. And again, this is just for the lemon cake. So are you guys familiar with how to separate eggs? We've done that little step before. Okay, it's a little messy. But um, your lemon cake recipe calls for two whole eggs and three yolks. So you're going to crack two whole eggs, and then the other three, you're going to crack them, hold it over a bowl, and you're going to work it a little bit to separate the white from the yolk. So the way you can do that is this right here, which is where you kind of work it back and forth between the shells, and you allow the white to drop, and you, you keep the yolk. The other way to do it is, this is how I was taught, it's kind of messy, but it gets the job done, is you crack it right into your hand and you let the, the white part of the yolk just kind of run through your fingers, and then you hold the yolk in your hand, and it separates really cleanly like that. It's messy. You wash your hands afterwards, but um, it gets the job done really, really quickly. Okay, so this is for all cakes. So this is the basic process that we're going to be going through, which is we're going to sift all of our dry ingredients, we're going to mix all of our wet ingredients, and then we're going to combine the two. So... Um, talking about sifting here. So all of your dry ingredients, you're going to want to refer to your recipes here. They're going to detail everything for you that is dry. But we're talking about flour, um, baking soda, baking powder. If you're making a chocolate cake, that's your cocoa powder. You want to sift all that. And the reason being, if there's any little lumps, you want to get those out before they go into your batter. Um, I know baking soda always tends to get really clumpy on me, and you want to make sure you get that worked out bite into a piece of cake and then have like a little nugget of baking soda in there. That's not good. So um, sifting. So you can use a sifter like this or this, this works as well. A couple options. For the wet ingredients, you're going to be using your KitchenAid mixers. So you want to use the paddle attachment, which looks like this. And you're going to put all of your wet ingredients into the bowl and mix that on low. So that's going to be your oils, your butter, your vanilla extract, and your buttermilk. Um, for those of you doing the chocolate cake recipe, your recipe calls for one cup of coffee. You will not be putting the coffee in at this point. I will, uh, actually, I'll take a moment to talk to you about the whole coffee thing. So you might find it interesting that there's a cup of coffee in your chocolate cake recipe. And uh, it's a basic chocolate cake recipe. It's not going to come out tasting like coffee, but um, coffee intensifies the flavor of chocolate. So that is the reason that we're adding it. And the recipe that we're working with is called Betty's Chocolate Cake. And it's fairly, fairly well known on, on the internet. It's um, on a lot of cake decorators' blogs. And it just produces a, a really nice uh, flavored, intensely flavored chocolate cake. So for the coffee portion of it, we're going to be doing that at the end. And I'll, I'll touch on that again. But in the meantime, this is how you're going to uh, work your wet ingredients. Is you're going to mix it in the mixer on low. Um, this right here I wanted to point out, so sometimes you see the flour kind of build up on the sides. When you see that start to happen, you want to shut your mixer off and you want to take your rubber spatula and run it around the edges to incorporate that back into the mix. Scrape, you want to scrape down the bowl. Basically, make sure you turn your mixers off for this step. Don't you put a spatula into a moving mixer. So this is the last step, and basically what you're doing here is you're taking all of your dry ingredients that have been sifted, and you're slowly incorporating them into your mixer with the wet ingredients. Um, you can do this on low, just to avoid a mess. Um, keep it on low. You can even turn it off if you want to. You can turn it off, add a little flour, turn it back on, let it mix. I'd recommend keeping the mixer on low for that. Um, and so going back to the whole coffee step, for those of you doing chocolate cake, the method that you want to do is you want to incorporate your flour, and then you want to have your one cup of, of uh, coffee. You need a little flour, a little coffee, a little flour.
flour with coffee so that you're alternating it. That's how you want to add the coffee. Um, and then as soon as it's mixed, you're, as soon as it's incorporated, you're done. You don't want to overmix it. Um, overmixing batters for any, anything that you're baking is going to make the end result tough. You don't want that going nice, light, flat cake. So don't overmix. <coughs> We're just going to fill our pans. Um, again, you're working with two pans, so you're going to have two of these guys. You're going to have a parchment circle in the bottom of them. Your sides are going to be nice and, and oiled. And so all you're going to do is try to evenly distribute your batter between the two pans, just like that. Um, lightly tap to release any air bubbles. This is what I mean by that. It's just a tiny little step. I sometimes just lift it maybe an inch off the ground and just tap it. Just let it drop a little bit. And you might see a couple air bubbles come up. If not, that's, that's fine. It's just and um, we're going to bake at 350 for 30 to 35 minutes. And um, we're going to do the toothpick test to see when they're done. And I think you guys did that with your brownies, right? Just a little toothpick in. If it comes out clean, come. For those of you making the lemon cake, we're going to do an extra step. And um, the reason we're doing this is because the lemon cake recipe that we're working with does not call for lemon extract. So all the flavor that we're getting into this cake is coming from the lemons. So this is just an extra step we're doing to really bump up the lemon flavor. So what we're going to do is, um, going back to whenever you squeezed out the juice, you're going to have a good amount of juice left because only two tablespoons of that is going into your batter. So you're going to have a little bit left over. So what you're going to do with that is you're going to combine it in a little saucepan and I can help you with this step. I'll, I'll be work, coming around the room to help you. Um, you're going to combine it in a saucepan with a half a cup of water and a half a cup of sugar. And you're going to add that lemon juice in it. We're making what's called a simple syrup and a lemon flavored simple syrup. So then what you're going to do is you're going to take um, a fork or a toothpick and you're going to put just some really delicate little holes. You don't want to make a big hole in there or anything. And we're just going to brush the top of it with that glaze. And that's going to allow the simple sugar to, or the simple syrup, to seep down into the cake and really amp up the, the lemon flavor even more. And then the final step is we're just going to allow the cakes to cool. Um, yeah, we're going to remove them from the pans by running a butter knife around the edges. I don't know if you guys will actually get to that, that point here in class. Um, you might run out of time, but... Uh, We'll talk about um, about cooling them down. So when you go to decorate them, so we're going to be decorating them in the next couple days, you always want to work with cool cake, even frozen cake. I actually prefer to work with frozen cake. Um, if you work with cake that's warm right out of the oven, you're just going to get crumbs everywhere. The moment you try to spread buttercream over it, it's just going to make a mess. So working with frozen cake is kind of a little trade secret there that is that's great. And um, <clears throat> what you do is, before you... Before you go to freeze your cake, you're going to, we'll probably do this step for you, but you always want to wrap your cake up really tightly in plastic. That's how you can get away with freezing it. As long as it's covered in plastic, nice and tight, you're really not going to, it's not going to affect the flavor. It just has to be sealed. And um, so that's kind of what this step is showing right here. I think I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in the coming few days today, or tomorrow and the next day, whenever we actually go to decorate that frozen cake. That's, that's the way to go. I think that's it. Is there any questions? Okay, all of your supplies are up here. And there's a tray here for chocolate cake and a tray here for lemon cake. Oh, and I should mention too, you're going to want to grab two of these guys, one for each layer, and label them with your period number and your kitchen number for whenever we package these up. are on the carts. If you're making lemon, it's on the lemon cart. If you're making chocolate, it's on the chocolate cart. If you're not sure, just look. And you'll have to wash your cake pans first. They're in your sink. They were used for a previous period. Ooh.